All right, so this is gonna be my review of the Pulsar X2 Premium Black Edition. It's a little different than the regular X2 because it has this premium coating. It is a rubberized material and it's surprisingly grippy in all situations. Whether you just picked it up or have been gaming for a couple hours, the grip stays consistent and the coating is just amazing. Something I've never seen before and the material is awesome. It, like I said, maintains its grip profile through continued use. And in a market that's getting flooded with pretty low cost, very high quality mouses, this one sets itself apart with this coating. So this is a size two medium. It's similar in appearance to the Logitech G Pro Superlight and now the G Pro Superlight 2 but that's kind of like saying a modern smartphone is similar in appearance to an iPhone. They all kind of follow the same overall form now and have slight variations. In this case, the slight variations feel very different in hand, but from a regular viewing distance, they do look very similar. When you face the bottoms to each other, you can see the size difference on the Pulsar X2. The G Pro Superlight is just a bit more bulky in the design and it feels a lot bigger in hand. The Pulsar has a more dramatic hump that's favored toward the rear of the mouse, whereas the G Pro Superlight kind of has a more even curve across the entire surface. So to me that results in the X2 feeling a lot smaller in hand. I have larger hands measuring about 8 inches or 20.3 centimeters from palm to fingertip and this thing does feel a lot smaller in hand than the G Pro Superlight like I mentioned earlier and the fact that the buttons sit lower plus they have these indented concave surfaces instead of the convex buttons that are on the G Pro Superlight. This all adds up to it feeling a lot smaller in hand to me than the GPX but it still feels good in hand. I really like the way pretty much all the Pulsar mouses feel in hand. They feel great. This material is particularly amazing to me because it's like having grip tape all over the entire surface of the mouse, but it doesn't add any extra weight or thickness to the original shape of the mouse. I really hope they put this on the X-Lite V2 mouse because I like the Ergo line that Pulsar makes. Touching on the construction quality, it's good, it's not great. The thing that bothers me about it is, as you can see, the mouse is made up of four major components, the back shell, the two buttons, and the side panels. The two side panels here, they are not fully flush with the shell and on one side it sticks out a little more. So if I run my finger across it here, it catches. I don't know if you can really see it in the video, but I'm trying to show it here. And then on this side, it's caved in a little bit more. So there's no catch here. Little things like that I do notice and do bother me when there are mouses like the Dragonfly F1 MOBA which comes with the 4K dongle for 60 bucks and the build quality is, I would say, probably just as good. It doesn't have the same coating, but I mean, if you're talking about bang for the buck, these Chinese mouses offer so much for so little that it really raises the bar for any of these previous mouse makers that were charging 80 to 90, 100 dollars, which wasn't even that much before, and that was kind of a bargain. When the G Pro Superlight first came out, it was like 150, 175 for the best lightweight mouses, and that was expected. But now that these components, the PAW 3395, and you know, nice switches, lightweight components are all in every mouse, everything has good to great components inside now, and they're a lot cheaper. So in order to charge now, in that 80 to 100 dollar range i feel like you got to bring something extra and or the quality should be top notch 
So with all of my Pulsar mouses, I have noticed little QC issues like that. I noticed the same thing on my X2 Mini Red. The gaps are different from one side to the other. I also had a double clicking issue with this one. I think it's resolved, but we'll see. I cleaned it out after about a week of use and it hasn't happened since, but it was occurring for a few days straight, no matter what I did. With the X-Lite V2, same thing. I have a catch on this side and kind of the same thing. It comes out a little further on the connection for these panels. So these are minute inconsistencies, but they do count to me. And these are not deal breakers, but they're things I notice, okay? If you look at the gap between the wheel and the buttons here, the gap is larger on the right side than it is on the left side. Don't get me wrong, this is an excellent mouse. It's my top three or four, I'd say. And probably my favorite mouse to use if I'm not gaming. It is an amazing pointer. I'm just saying that now you can get an Attack Shark X3 for 30 bucks or even less. That weighs 49 grams, has 1000 hertz polling, has a pod 3395, and everything you need. Very good build quality, not perfect, but very good. And I think these just raise the bar for anyone that's going to charge more than what they are. So I think Pulsar does a good job of offering something extra with the way they design their stuff, give you special versions, special colorways, and special coatings even. I'd say their designs are probably my favorite of all mouse makers. I feel that their design and presentation level matches their premium prices. In terms of raw gaming performance though, these new Chinese mouses, like I keep saying, are crazy. And I just think they raise the bar for all mouse makers, and that's good for us as gamers and consumers. So when I use this mouse, I'm usually doing a fingertip claw hybrid type grip, whatever this is going to be called. I feel like the Pulsar buttons are positioned a little lower than a traditional mouse, and this helps for the style that I use it in. So, it essentially feels like an elongated version of the HSK Pro 4K, to be honest. It has very low buttons as well, so when I use it, I kind of hold it just in the very front and only navigate holding this part. When I use the X2, I kind of hold it the same way, and I don't really need any of this. It doesn't get in the way, but it's just extra weight. That's why this is my favorite gaming mouse. But the X2 Premium Black is a very good mouse as well. So what makes this mouse worth a premium price to me is this special rubberized coating. It is a lot different feeling than the regular plastic of, let's say, the X2 Mini Red that I'm showing here. And... It's a little bit hard to display through the camera, but there is a very large grip difference and it's just really nice. I use grip tape on my Death Adder V3 Pro. The surface is already really nice, but I like having that extra friction there because it requires even less energy to move the mouse and it feels even more effortless, even though there's a little bit of added weight. So I give up that weight to get that extra effortlessness. So the thing that's awesome about the X2 Premium Black is that I get all the advantages of using grip tape without the disadvantages. I've also changed out the skates on my mouse. I have Talon Games glass skates on here and as you can see they're scuffed up. That's not a mistake. I did that on purpose. I sanded them down because they were a little too fast for me for the way I use this mouse. And I have Straight Town Games skates on my Mini X2 Red that I didn't scuff up here. I still use it. But sometimes I prefer something with a little more stopping power that I can just stop a little easier with. So, you know, I'll switch up my mouses a lot. But on this particular one, I scuffed up the glass and sanded it down. 
and it just offers that extra stopping power combined with the glide of glass. As you can see, I like to switch it up a lot, but this is one I really like a lot and have been using as my main for the last couple weeks. This uses a PAW3395 sensor, 26,000 DPI, 650 IPS, 50G acceleration, and it weighs about 52 grams. The length is 4.56 inches or 116 millimeters. The width is 2.4 inches or 61 millimeters. The height is 1.45 inches or 37 millimeters. It uses a USB-C connection to charge. It uses Huano blue shell pink switches and a TTC gold encoder for the wheel. So pretty much the top components for a lightweight mouse. But like I said earlier, all those components are now in the lower cost AliExpress Chinese mouses too. In terms of pricing, this was $95 at the time of purchase. It was a limited run and they are not available anymore on the official Pulsar site. I don't know if they're on the resale market or if they're widely available at all. So hopefully they make more products with this coating because like I kept repeating this entire video, this coating is amazing and it is just incredible to me. I don't know what else to say about it. Pros and cons for pros, I think the design is amazing. They do very much with very little, if that makes sense. This is my only black colored mouse. I think it looks really sleek. Pulsar designs are just a little better than everything else in my opinion, I think they're a step above in that department and presentation. Their look is just always on point and they have something that just gives it that little extra kick and makes it look a little more premium than the next mouse. One thing I've seen other manufacturers copy is the way they do their bottom shells and I think that's a testament to their innovation in design. For cons, I would say that the price is a con to me now, even though it's not really their fault that prices have bottomed out so much. They're still maintaining their previous pricing with all these new really good mouses on the market now. So these AliExpress companies are kind of doing the same thing that Pulsar did to the bigger mouse companies. They're coming in with the same components and let's say, you know, 90 to 95% of the same performance at a fraction of the cost, even less than 50% sometimes. So that is impossible to ignore. And like I said, in terms of cons, I'd say their pricing now just seems a bit high because of the lightweight mouse situation right now. And the thing is, I really love this mouse. I'm just saying that times are changing very quickly because these... New manufacturers move so quick, they'll make new versions of mouses, they'll update their components without having to wait for a product cycle. They'll just do it on the fly and release another version. It doesn't matter to them. So it's pretty crazy and it's gonna be interesting to see how the mouse game evolves. Right now, I'm seeing more of the lightweight metal mouses and then focusing on the software and eight kilohertz polling. So it's going to be fun to see where this goes. My overall assessment of the mouse is that it's an awesome mouse. In terms of gaming performance, it's excellent. But pretty much all of the gaming mouses now with a PAW3395 in the 50 to 60 gram range are going to kind of perform in the same ballpark. They're all going to kind of feel very similar with slight variations. Now, of course, there are levels. But when you're talking about value, which is critical to most people, there's some that cost $30 and there are some that cost $100 and some that cost upwards of $150. So for all of them to be in the same general ballpark for performance is conversation worthy to me and why I keep repeating that point. So what I'd say is it performs well just as well as any other PAW3395 mouse in a medium size. The great thing about this is the coating makes it feel like the entire mouse is covered in grip tape. 
but you're not getting the extra weight of grip tape. So like I said, I have bigger hands and I use this in a fingertip claw hybrid, whatever this grip is gonna be called. It feels great, it feels awesome. I recommend it for anyone who uses grip tape on their mouse and would like to try a special coating that offers the advantages of grip tape, but not the added weight. This special feature makes it worth trying out and worth the premium over all the other PAW3395 options out there. It is different. So those are my thoughts. I hope this review was helpful for you. I'm still new to doing this, so I feel like I went on for a long time. So I'm kind of still crafting how these are gonna come together. So if you have any feedback, things you liked, things you didn't like, just let me know. I hope it was helpful for you in some way though. And as always, thanks for joining me and supporting my dream of creating content around technology, innovation, and design. I really appreciate it and I will see you in the next one.